हेलो एवरीवन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी प्रॉब्लम्स बेस्ड ऑन द बस एडमिटेंस मैट्रिक्स एंड लोड फ्लो मेथड्स सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द क्वेश्चन वी विल सी फर्स्ट द हाउ वी कैन हाउ वी वी कैन फाउंड द बस बाय बस एडमिटेंस मैट्रिक्स so we will see the formation of by bus matrix with the help of one example and the uh, in this problem we are having given a three bus network is shown in the figure below indicating the per unit impedance of each element the by bus admittance matrix of the network is so this is three uh, bus network given below so now we know that if we are having three bus system then what is the order of by bus matrix it will be 3 cross 3 and we represent the ele various elements of by bus matrix by by 11 1, y12 y13 this diagonal elements are represented as for By one one, by two two, and by three three. And off diagonal elements are just by one two and one one represents the first first element first uh, y represents the row and second represents the column. Accordingly, you can write the by bus matrix. So we need to find all these values. So how we will do? First step is that you need to convert these impedance into admittance. so these values are given in per unit impedance so you need to first convert the, this into admittance so this you can write like by 10 and this by 12 so by 1 to will be 1 divided by j 0.2 so it will be minus j 5 and similarly you can find by 2 3 by 2 3 means the adductance connected between the second bus and the third bus and this you can write by 3 0 that is sent element connected at the third bus so i printed as 30 and the next step is that we bifurcate for diagonal elements and off diagonal elements this is diagonal elements and rest are off diagonal elements so for a second step will be for off diagonal elements what are the thing we need to do the diagonal elements of each node is the sum of admittance connected to it so so for the diagonal elements for by 1 1 whatever the elements connected at bus 1 you just need to sum up then this will give by 1 1 and for by 2 2 whatever the elements connected to bus 2 it will give by 2 2 and by 3 similar in similar way so for by 1 1 you need to just sum up minus j10 and minus j5 so you will get minus j15 we can also write it like this we have added up here by 12 plus y10 and for by 22 by 23 and By two three plus by one two, and for by three three, by 
टू थ्री एंड वाई थ्री जीरो करेक्ट एंड नाउ वी विल सी द प्रोसीड्योर फॉर ऑफ डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स एंड फॉर फाइंडिंग द ऑफ डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स इट इज इक्वल टू निगेटिव ऑफ एडमिटेंस कनेक्टेड बिटवीन द नोट्स सो फॉर बाई वन टू यू नीड टू जस्ट बाई वन टू यू विल यू नीड टू डू वट निगेटिव ऑफ बाई वन टू सो बाई वन टू इज माइनस जे फाइव सो इट विल कम एज जे फाइव In similar way, we will find this all of diagonal elements, and there are, there is no element connected between the bus one and bus three, so it is coming as zero. So that's uh, it. Uh, by bus for the power system, it is also called as a sparse matrix because some elements are zero. and we know that the by bus is a symmetric matrix so we can find the other elements of of diagonal elements so by 2 1 is equal to by 1 2 and by 3 1 is equal to by 1 3 and by 3 2 is equal to by 2 3 so putting all these value is in by bus matrix we will get the final answer like this based on this concept based on this trick based on the method this method we are going to solve first problem This is from Gate 2017, Set 1. So, just you all of you, please try to solve this problem, and whoever is getting answer, type your answer in the chat box. at least you all of you try so that you will get confidence the question is that a three bus power system is shown in the figure below where the diagonal elements of by bus matrix are by 1 1 is equal to minus j 12 per unit and by 2 2 is minus j 15 per unit and by 3 3 is minus j 7 per unit and the per uh, this is the figure shown below uh, figure shown and the per unit values of the line directions p q and r shown in the figure r you need to find these values so these values are given in directions so first uh, i am just reminding you that here these terms are very useful don't confuse with these terms i know this is very basic one but you should keep this in mind what they are asking they are asking reactance they are asking susceptance or admittance And y is equal to one divided by z. So this this be called as admittance. Just reciprocal of impedance. So it will give g plus j b. We call this g as conductance. and this b is called sus suspectance susceptance so in this problem we are given as these values diagonal elements y11 
so we can write it as y11 is given as minus j12 so we can write this as y12 plus y13 because line is connected between bus 1 and bus 2 and bus 1 and bus 3 so it will be minus j12 this will become first equation and another diagonal elements are given as y22 so it is given as minus j15 so for this we know that diagonal elements how we how we we are going to calculate just sum up the all elements connected to the bus so by 1 2 plus by 2 3 this will be minus j15 so this is second equation and the last diagonal elements by 3 3 value given as minus j7 the sum of all elements connected at bus 3 will be y13 plus y23 this will be minus j7 this is third so we need to just we are having three unknowns and three equations so this is solvable just subtract first minus third you will get by 1 2 minus by 2 3 is equal to minus j5 this we call, call as 4 and add 4 plus 2 adding 4 plus 2 4 and 2 we will get 2 by 1 2 is equal to minus j20 so we get 1 value y12 as minus j10 Sim and we put this value in first then we then we will get by 1 3 as minus j2 and by 2 3 as minus j5 these are the reactance value we got So these are the admittance value we got. So from the figure, it is given that P is P is the reactance. So it will be reciprocal of admittance by 2, 3 because P is connected between 2 and 3 bus. So this will be 1 divided by minus J5 this comes as j0.2 and q is connected between bus 1 and bus 2 so this will be j0.1 and r is connected between bus 1 and 3 so this will be j0.5 so which is the correct option from the options given so b is the correct option how many of you solve this problem till here is there any doubt you can ask me whatever the answer you are getting you type your answer in chat box and if you have any doubt at any point then you can ask so let us moving sir can we uh, can we just sim uh, solve this question like jq plus jr is equal to 1 by uh, minus j12 in this way jq plus jr is equal to what minus 1 by minus j12 yeah you can try that way also jq yes uh, it will be thus just reciprocal no no that way uh, uh, you first need to find the y bus matter you are calculating through this z bus that is not correct procedure I think sir, uh, this will not work. 
वन बाई जे क्यू प्लस वन बाई जे आर इज इक्वल टू माइनस जे ट्वेल्व इन दिस वे आई थिंक इट कैन बी डन बिकॉज जे दिस बिकॉज क्यू एंड आर इज रिएक्टेंस सो वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट इट इन एडमिटेंस नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम दिस problem is very nice uh, is one of the uh, recently it has been asked in the gate i think it is asked in gate 2021 antanu you can turn off your mic so the second problem is that a three bus network is shown consider generated such ideal voltage sources if rows 1 2 and 3 of the by bus matrix correspond to bus 1 2 and 3 respectively then by bus of the network is and this has been asked recently and it is in 2021 so whatever the method we have seen just uh, before we cannot apply this here why this so because one node is present between the bus we can see this node and let us call this node as x so be having uh, we will go through the conventional one or just go through the basic how we can how we can find the by bus through using the kcl so first we assume that the injected current at bus 1 will be by 1 uh, i1 and this injected current at bus 3 will be i3 and injected current at bus 2 is i2 and voltage at bus 1 is v1 v2 v3 and voltage at this node x is vx so we will this is not that much tough but uh, this node comes in picture so we cannot apply directly whatever just we go we have gone before the short trick of finding by bus matrix so this will this will little bit take time and you need to apply kcl so here i1 i2 i3 be just need to calculate i1 i2 i3 in terms of v1 v2 v3 so we can see that from this by bus formation we need to calculate i1 i2 i3 in terms of v1 v2 and v3 and we have to eliminate this vx so let us see 
just write down this question now i am going to the next slide so we can write that i1 is equal to i1 is equal to v1 minus vx divided by impedance that is j so we can term it as 1 and i2 will be v2 minus vx divided by j that is 2 and i3 will be v3 minus vx divided by j that is 3 so these three equations we got so now we need to eliminate vx so for eliminating vs b apply nodal analysis at x node x so applying nodal analysis at node x So first will be Vx minus 0, ground is there, so divided by J plus Vx minus V1 divided by J plus Vx minus V2 divided by J plus Vx minus V3 divided by J is equal to 0. So we get 4 vx divided by j is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by j so we got vx value in terms of v1 plus in terms of v1 v2 and v3 like this vx is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by four so this we call as number equation number four now putting put four in first second and third in first second and third we have so on i1 will become v1 minus v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by 4 divided by j in order to just make it simple multiply and divide by j so it will become minus j v1 minus v v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by 4 so this will give i1 is equal to minus j3 v1 plus 4 plus j v2 plus 4 plus j v3 divided by 4 now anyone can tell what will be value of i2 by seeing this i1 because all the equation we are seeing that is similar because that are similar so if you put vx into anyone can tell what will be the value of i2 by seeing this i1 without calculation because all the equation first second and third are similar so i2 will be also come similar as i1 3v1 by 4 who is speaking yes 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 very good j j 3v1 by 4 minus j v2 by 4 minus j v3 by 4 hello yeah first first uh, term is correct but next no, part term is also positive sir. again you can tell i2 will be 
I two equal to J three V one by four. I two will be J three V one by four. No, no, that is not. Means this is similar now. Means in I one you are getting minus four V one term. For I two you will getting minus in. One by four. Yeah. J V one by four. Yeah. Minus. J three V two by four. Yes, sir. Plus J three V three by four. Yes, correct. Yes, what What is your name? Anil Moore. Very good. So you can save your time in the exam because all first, second, third are similar. If you doubt, then it's better to solve. Otherwise, you will get you will lose two marks and you will get. Minus zero point six six marks. So always you means accuracy matters very accuracy matters much. Whatever you solving problem, it should be you are means See. confident. Minus three by four. With three by four. Okay, good. So similar, uh, similarly, we get I two and I three. You can also calculate if anyone have doubt. So, so just we will using five, six, and seven. We will put this in matrix form. This is one of the best question asked on this admittance matrix. Because no trick will work here. I one, I two, I three. Minus J. Three divided four, J one divided four, J one divided four, J one divided four minus J three four, J one divided four, so J one divided four minus J three divided four. B one, B two, B three. So the correct option will be C. <sighs> so if uh, anyone have doubt till here. So let us see the next problem, problem number three. The bus admittance matrix of a three bus power system is given below, considering that there is no shunt inductor connected to any of the buses. Which of the following cannot be true? So whatever the uh, is coming true, you have to f just ignore that and. Yeah, in this question, it's not true. So be careful. The be uh, just careful while reading the problem. So uh, here, one thing is that for Y bus matrix, just sum up all the rows. For the first row, what the term is coming? It will be 15 minus F. It will be zero. And here it will come as J14 minus J13.5. It will come as J0.5. And here 9 minus J8. It will come as J0.1. So 0 means no shunt element is present at bus 1. So please uh, uh, start from the beginning once more. 
so here in this problem it is asked about the shunt element connected at the various buses so this is one of the trick and how you can find the shunt element so first you need to sum sum all the rows means all uh, sum all the elements of a row like for first row you have to sum up J minus j15 plus j10 plus j5 it will be equal to 0 and for the second row it will be j10 minus j13 5 plus j4 it will be j0.5 and for third row similar way you will get j0.1 if value is coming at 0 it means no shunt element is present at the bus 1 or no shunt branch is present at bus 1 and you can see here value is coming as non zero that means shunt element is present shunt element is present at bus 2 and bus 3 so remember this if it is coming zero means no shunt element is present at the bus 1 we will make the diagram also for the network and this value you can like here you are get, getting zero you can this because these are shunt elements so it is not connected with the line so you can just name it as by one zero y one zero value is zero and y two zero value is coming at j zero point five because these are shunt elements so we are representing like this one if we are representing the diagonal elements be represented as by ii that is by 11 by 22 like this and for non diagonal elements we are representing it as y12 y21 y31 like this so it, they are shunt elements so it is we are representing with, re with reference to 0 so by 30 will be j1 so these are these are the value for the shunt branch and the value of shunt branch at bus 1 is 0 so that means no shunt no shunt element is present at bus 1 So we have uh, find out that shunt element is present at this. So from the options we can see that what are they asking? Line charging capacitor of finite will be present at all three, three lines. So this will be incorrect. So it, in this question it is also that which is incorrect. So this will be the option because in the first bus it is present. So this option will be incorrect. line charging capacitor of finite bus is present in line 2 and 3 only yes it is present in 2 and 3 we will see this and line charging capacitor will be present in 2 3 and shunt capacitor finite will be present in bus only we will see further so now we will make the diagram for this by bus matrix bus 1 bus 2 bus 3 so what is the y12 value from the y bus we can say that it is y12 value is j10 so negative of this value will come as y12 so y12 will be minus of j10 similar way this y223 will be negative of y by 23 so this will be by 2 3 will be and y 1 3 how you can find this one by 2 3 will be j 4 correct so it will be minus j 4 and y 1 3 will be 1 3 will be j 5 so it will be minus j 5 so these elements are 5 so by 1 2 we can get minus j 15 correct minus j plus minus j 5 minus j 15 
for by 2 2 it is coming at minus j 13.5 so you are getting minus j 14 so it is confirmed that here one cent element is present so you can represent like this one so this value is j 0 0.5 and you can name it as by 2 3 dash divided by 2 and this one is also by 2 3 dash divided by 2 in j 0 0.5 so now this by 2 2, 2 2 will come as minus j 10 plus minus j 14 and plus j 0 0.5 it will be minus j 13.5 and now for by 3 3 it is minus j 8 so minus j 9 plus one cent element more will you connect this like so this will be j 0 0.5 so just write here one point that line charging admittance we make a line charging admittance admittance of a, of a line is represented as pi equivalent so that's why we make it as we make it as pi equivalent and from here you can verify that cent element presented 1 2 and 3 so we have noted down previous that by 1 0 is no cent element present so it will be 0 so by 2 0 will be by 2 3 is coming as by dash 2 3 divided by 2 it is j 0 0.5 and by 3 0 will be by 2 3 dash divided 2 plus 1 cent capacitor is present so it will be j1 so these are be, these we are getting from the we have calculated earlier here so from here we can see that for the line we can write the concluding remark between line 1 and 2 between lines 1 and 2 no line no line charging suspectance or admittance whatever you can write suspect susceptance and between lines 1 and 3 same no line charging susceptance and between 2 and 3rd between lines 2 and 3rd line charging susceptance is present is present and at bus 3 at bus 3 at bus 3 one finite sand capacitor is present sand capacitor is present so what are the correct options line charging capacitor finite value is present in lines 2 and 3 only we have seen that so this is correct and line charging capacitor of finite value is present in line 2 and 3 only and sent capacitor of finite value is present bus only this is incorrect because it is presented bus 3 
and last option is line charging capacitor finite value present in the line 2 3 only and shunt capacitor finite value present was 3 only this is correct so two options are correct and two options are incorrect so it is asking about incorrect option so a and c are the correct option so many students uh, having means in exam they have put down b and d so they will not get any marks this is multiple slate question either you will get plus 2 or you will get 0 for wrong answer there is no negative marking in multiple slate question so is there any doubt in this problem so this one you just remember where sent element will present or where sent element is not present so let us see the next problem so this problem is that from gate 217 2 marks in this question the bus admitted matrix for a power system network is given below there is transmission line connected between bus 1 and 3 which is represented by the circuit shown in the figure so if this transmission line is removed from service what is the modified bus admittance matrix so uh, before attempting this question we will make the whole network for this 3 bus system how we can make we can see that from bus admittance matrix that all diagonal elements are equal and octagonal elements are also same therefore all transmission line will be identical this is true because we are getting the all diagonal elements are equal and off diagonal elements are also equal so here all transmission line will be identical so i have made down with this from this values we have given for 1 and 3 we will make similar similar for line lines 1 2 and 2 and 3 so we are having given z13 as j0.05 per unit so you can find the admittance minus it will come as minus j20 similarly all of the elements are equal so it will be minus uh, it will be similar now the line of all sent charging suspensions are also equal here so it will be my, uh, it will come as j0.05 from the diagonal elements because diagonal is given as minus j13.9 so we can find these values now in this question it is asked that if if this line is removed then what will the new new bias new bus admittance matrix so just removing this line by uh, line between bus 1 and bus 3 you just calculate all these values you will get the answer so correct answer for this problem is C. I have solved this question. You can just look it once after after the class. You will better understand. But this is very simple one. Now we will see the sparsity and number of transmission lines. Yes, anyone want to speak something? Sir, can you share this PDF sir, after class? Sir? Yeah, sure. Thank you. After class, I think from gate portal you will get some. You will take. It will take some time. You can check it through YouTube channel. Okay. 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 Now we will see the sparsity and number of transmission lines. So the for the sparsity, be uh, it is denoting the number of zero elements in the in a by bus matrix. So this formula is like that. Percentage sparsity will be it is the ratio of number of zero elements in by bus to the total number of elements into 100. Similarly, for the finding of the number of transmission lines, you just it is very important. n square into 1 minus x minus n divided by 2. This will give you number of transmission lines, where any the number of buses are order of matrix. Just note down this formula. A sparsity means like it is a sparse means it is doing the zero elements in the by bus matrix so this uh, uh, you don't need to uh, put more mind in remembering this uh, statement i think you are mo more familiar with this word now we will solve one or two problems based on this uh, sparsity and number of transmission lines so note down this uh, formula we will we are going to solve the problem so the problem is that at 100 a1 
थाउजेंड क्रॉस वन थाउजेंड बस एडमिटेंस मैट्रिक्स फॉर एन इलेक्ट्रिक पावर सिस्टम हैज एट थाउजेंड नॉन जीरो एलिमेंट्स द मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ ब्रांचेज इन द सिस्टम आर दिस इज आस्ट इन गेट टू थाउजेंड एटीन वन मार्क प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट वी विल सी थ्रो कन्वेंशनल वन देन वी विल सी थ्रो द ट्रिक सीन द एक्सप्रेशन सॉरी कैन द डायग्नोल एलिमेंट्स बी जीरो इट विल बी नेवर जीरो so we can write that diagonal elements in by bus matrix bus admittance matrix is always non zero is always non zero so if we are having 1000 cross 1000 by bus matrix then how many number of diagonal elements are there can anyone tell how many diagonal elements in the by bus matrix if we are having 1000 cross 1000 by bus matrix this is very simple i think uh, you can uh, you can tell this anil yes sir uh, what will the diagonal elements what will the number of diagonal elements 1000 yeah. one yeah correct and of diagonal elements may be zero and may be not zero why because there may be line connected between the between the bus buses of diagonal elements can be can be either zero or non zero because there may be line connected between the buses or not it depends so we can write non zero of diagonal elements non zero of the elements will be anyone can tell it thousand how much 8000 uh, are non zero elements so we have write down the diagonal elements are thousand so uh, for of diagonal elements it will be 7000 correct i think it is clear so you can write like this also out of out of 8000 out of 8000 non zero elements 1000 are diagonal elements and 7000 are are of diagonal elements so we can say that one transmission line one transmission line consist of two of diagonal elements consist of two of diagonal elements because we know that y1 ik is equal to by ki so we can say that number of transmission lines will be 
number of transmission line is number of non-zero of diagonal elements divided by 2 that will be 3500 correct you can write like, like this number of non-zero of diagonal elements divided by 2 So this uh, this is the conventional one means you don't need to if you don't want to remember the expression then you can use your mind also Now we will see through the expression. So that is second method you can write. So first we, uh, we need to find the sparsity because in the firm in the expression number of transmission line it is x is coming. So percentage sparsity x will be number of zero elements so total number of elements will be 1000 cross 1000 minus 8000 will be the total number of zero elements divided by total number of elements into 100 it will be 0 0.992 percent And in this expression, uh, x is percentage sparsity that I represented. So just put write down this expression number of transmission lines number of transmission lines will be n square 1 minus x minus n where n is the number of buses so this you need to remember so just put all these values 1000 cross 1000 my 1 minus 0 0.992 minus 1000 divided by 2 so if you multiply then you will get 1000 into 8 minus 1000 divided by 2 so 1000 into 7 divided by 2 it will be 3500 so either way you can apply conventional one is also easier one there is no need to if you don't want to remember the expression then there, there is no need you can apply the basic one also so now moving forward to the types of system buses so generally we categorize the buses in power system as into three categories so first one is like bus this is also called as the reference bus and it is also known as the swing bus or infinite bus and here the magnitude and phase angle of the voltage are specified and this is also called as infinite infinite bus um, infinite bus because it can exchange any amount of power whatever the whatever we want so load bus is and the second second category is load bus this, this bus is also known as P, pq bus and here the real and active power are specified and third one is called voltage control bus this is also known as pv bus pv bus generator bus or regulated bus this pv bus and generator bus are most common term so just remember this so here real power and voltage magnitude are specified so there are four quantities in the uh, load flow analysis voltage magnitude voltage angle and the active active power and active power so in all the th three types of buses 
two quantities are specified and we need to find the two unknown quantities so be, uh, i have make it in down in table so for, for select was voltage magnitude and delta is given and unknown quantities are active and active power and for load was active and active power are given and voltage quantity and delta you need to find out and for voltage control bus p this is also known as pv bus so this uh, active power and voltage magnitude are specified and q and delta you need to find so based on this we can solve this problem So in this problem, it is in uh, it is given that the three bus power system shown in the figure has one alternator connected to bus two, which supplies 200 megawatt and 40 MVA or power. Bus three is infinite bus having voltage of magnitude V3 is equal to 1.05 zero per unit and angle of minus 15 degree. So this is given as infinite bus. It is already given. So we don't have to find uh, anything, sir. We have to just find the Bus type only. Ha ah, yeah. Bus three is select bus because yeah. it has voltage so, and as well as uh, angle. Correct. And on the uh, bus two is uh, PV bus. Bus two is PV bus because the generator is there in this bus. No, it is uh, incorrect. Bus two here. What values are given? Generator generator is connected. What what values are given? You need to see that. What are the values are specified? So here P2 and K2 are specified, and this P, mm, this this my these are unknown. So this is PQ bus. But generator bus is always PV bus. Generator bus, but here generator is connect connected. But what are the quantities specified here? Active power, negative power. Correct. So here it is one connected bus to be supply 200 megawatt and 40 mVR power. So bus to will be PQ bus because it it is specified a specified quantity you need to see. And now we are left with bus one. So this is also correct. And this option are incorrect. So we uh, we need to find this bus one. What is that PQ bus or PV bus? So in this bus, voltage magnitude is given. V one is given. And how we can say that P is given also? Because this we can see that at bus one, so that magnitude of bus one voltage is maintained on one point zero five per unit. And the phase angle of source current is theta one plus minus pi by two. So this current is always leading or lagging with voltage. So active power specified here is zero because of this leading or lagging current. Where theta is the phase angle of bus one voltage. So we can say that at bus one P is zero and voltage magnitude is given as one point zero five per unit. And other quantities are unknown, so this is D. Bus D is correct. Uh, D option is correct. So let us see the next problem. For bus two, these are unknown. Remember, what are the known quantities from there? You can you need to consider. Because state variables are v and delta, so in bus two v and delta, either of these is not present. Hmm. So maybe that is why we cannot consider it as PV bus. Yeah. Quantity is just we are specific that what the quantity is specified. So from the quantity specified, you need to take care the all the all these things. So the last option for today's session. In this question, in a load flow problem solved by Newton-Raphson method with polar coordinates, the size of Jacobian is 100 cross 100. If there are 20 PV buses, in addition to PQ buses and a select bus, the total number of buses in the system is. 
I have not gone through this uh, load flow analysis like Newton Epson method, Gauss Seidel load flow. We will see uh, in the subsequent class. Meanwhile, just we are going to solve the problem. So we will see the Jacobian matrix form, all these things, and load flow equations, all these things. So I just uh, uh, write down the expression for size of Jacobian matrix, and this question asked in gate 2017 set two. So size of Jacobian matrix is equal to 2 into PQ bus 2 into number of PQ bus plus PV bus. Just remember this expression and we will see how this expression comes in the subsequent class so don't uh, don't need to, there is no need to worry so in the other we have uh, we can see that the quantity is given as we are given pv bus p bus given as 20 and size jacobian is given as 100 so put all these values and we will find the PQ bus that is load bus. So size of Jacobian matrix is 100, 2 into PQ bus plus PV bus is given as 20. So from here, PQ bus it will be 100 minus 20 divided by 4, it will be 40. So PQ bus will has come as 40. So we can write total number of buses total number of buses will be PQ bus plus number of PV bus plus one is slack bus. One denotes the slack bus. In one power system only one bus will be slack bus that is the difference bus. And in the expression, also remember that this does not consist. It does not consist the like so like was. Many uh, include this term here also. Sorry. So PQ bus is 40 plus PV bus is 20 plus 1. Total number of buses will be 61. So the correct answer for this problem is 61. Thank you everyone. So till here any doubt or any query you have to ask. Antanu? No sir. Anil? Do you have any query? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. So we will meet uh, in the next session and keep uh, uh, studying and uh, don't lose hope. Syllabus is vast, I know, means for all the for whole gates, but you need to just uh, be consistent and whatever time you're getting, you just uh, solving uh, the problems and getting the concepts, learning the concepts. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Hello, sir.